intro music. <laughs> Welcome to Disney A, the Canadian-themed Disney travel podcast. I missed a line there. <laughs> We're your hosts. I'm Brandon. And I'm Krista. You know, you've had 129 episodes to get it right. Yeah, I, I, have, I haven't memorized that yet. <laughs> That's uh, a little sad. Well, no, I have memorized it, but I also get nervous. Yeah, so. that's fair. Okay, that's less sad. Now I feel now I feel sad for making fun of you for messing it you up. You should, yes. <laughs> you should. You should feel very bad. Yeah, um, yeah. Canadian-themed Disney Travel you know Podcast. What? We're your hosts. Not that bad, though, because I'm Krista, and I had to do a blind day with Disney, mm. so I don't feel that badly for you. Well, you know what? What? I'm not sorry about it. <laughs> no, no. No. You're not sorry? No. <laughs> but keep that in mind we're gonna we're gonna talk about that a little bit later mm-hmm. and uh so krista what are you uh drinking i am drinking a... on this oh, let's let oh, let's preface this up. okay let's yep. preface mm-hmm. this yep. um this is a lovely uh, long weekend in Canada. Yes. So this episode's coming out just like a few hours later because it is we're long weekending. We're long weekending. We're off tomorrow. I it. Yes. We're off tomorrow. Yep. Uh, we're this recording is this on a Sunday, mm-hmm. and uh, the episode might be out a little late on later than usual on a Monday, yeah. but uh, it'll be out on Monday. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's my plan anyway. I am drinking a Vizzy. It was lovely and hot and summery, and uh, Vizzy Hard Seltzer. This is a black cherry lime. Mm. Um, yes, it was sunny, and this is unusual because usually it, it snows in Canada. <laughs> usually the weather in on May long, as we call it, it's actually Victoria Day long weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for the glory of Queen Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly we wanted a week, long weekend in yeah. May. <laughs> yes. And by way, I mean like Canadians in general. Um, yeah, but we have a long mostly weekend. Me. It's mostly, yeah, mostly me. I'm, I decided it. Mostly me. <laughs> um, we have a long weekend every month of the year, don't we? Yes, question mark. Well, this one's the May one, but it's the unofficial start of summer. Mo- most? I think we didn't have one in February and now in, we have family in day. Alberta, and yeah, we did. now we have... No, we've always had Family Day. We just didn't have it on the same day. No, no, we've never... That they, they made a Family Day, mm-hmm. and it was on a different weekend um, originally, and then they, they moved it, but that's a... Pro- so we have federal holidays and provincial holidays, and Quebec has some, like, weird, like, Baptiste Day or something, Saint Baptiste Day. Yeah, there's some like specific yeah. ones. Um, Alberta was for the first province to celebrate Family Day in 1990. Oh, sorry, I was talking uh, BC yes. started later. Yes. that's what I meant. Mm-hmm. That's because that's where I work. Ah, uh, yes, you were going by work, not live. Yes. Okay, fair enough. Um, but yes, this is it is our unofficial start of summer. It often snows. <laughs> On this weekend, it but instead it's really been gorgeous. Does. Yeah, it's so. been very. It's been a beautiful May, yeah. except for all the um, burning. There's a lot of burning. Yeah, that is that is. I hope they get forest that fires. Hor- horrible. I'd rather have snow than in May than forest fires, honestly. But yeah, so. But uh, we were outside anyway. Yeah, we were it's enjoying it. Work. And you had you. So you have a a busy. Mm-hmm. I also have a busy. Mine's a blueberry pomegranate. Yeah, you don't so like not, black cherry. You would not like this. No, one. No, mine's better. Mm, I like this one actually. Also, Brandon, what is your nerd thing this week? <laughs> Every time. I didn't think this far ahead. What? Every time. Okay. My nerd thing yeah. this week. Yeah. I mowed the lawn for the first time this year. <laughs> so prepping for summer stuff. Yeah. It's like summertime. Mm-hmm. Um, my neighbor probably wishes I had mowed a long time ago. <laughs> we we had We do a good job and... with our lawn. I yeah. I do a good job with my lawn. It's just our neighbor is a little... He has a hobby. And, and it's mowing the lawn. And it's mowing the lawn. Um, and, but yes. and manicuring his lawn. And you know what? That's fine. Just don't judge me with my, like, mediocre lawn. High mediocre. I think it's a high mediocre it, lawn. It's a beautiful... We have a beautiful yard. Mm-hmm. We do fine. And the, the dandelions don't go to bloom. Yep. And it's fine. Yep. Anyway, I, I was excited to mow the lawn for yes. the first time. I thought you were going to go with the smoking. 
I also smoked for the first time. Yeah, we were having a whole summer kind of moment. Oh here. yeah, it's summer. Yeah. Summertime and the living is easy. I smoked a roast and that was delicious. Mm-hmm. I love smoking things. Yeah, we're gonna you're gonna smoke some steaks Partic- tomorrow. Mostly meat, but yes. you know. It's the only thing you smoke. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. That's, yeah. it. So that's it. Nah. I told you, yeah, that's it. Um, my nerd thing is next weekend is my sister's stag at party. And we are, we, I have, I'm the maid of honor, well, matron of honor, I guess, but maid of honor. And I have plans and I'm excited. <laughs> it's, it sounds like a good time. Like I was like halfway debating getting a wig <laughs> and, oh boy, girls, let's have a good time. Yeah. So we're going to record in advance next week's and i'll tell me tell you about the plans then because that'll be my nerd thing next week too honestly it it, it might be in like an hour from now (laughs) but it won't come out then (laughs) oh wait we're breaking the magic um okay any well we don't really have like a mandalorian episode or a marvel episode or anything like that to report no and we also have not started watching uh the Rebels show yet. Which no, but we were working on Visions. We're almost done the first season. We are done the first season. We fin- I thought we had one left. No, we finished the first Ooh, season. Ooh, we can get started on the second season. I think we need to watch Rebels. Oh, we're I, like, time is ticking. I think I think it's very important that we start watching Rebels. <laughs> okay, we will start watching Rebels. Good plan. Let's head to the news then. Disney A News Update. Okay, we have news. A little, little bit of news this week. Okay, let's prioritize and just do the this. Just do the big ticket items. There's, uh, there's a couple of them. Yeah. Okay, where do you want to start? Wherever you want to start. Florida. No, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> if we must, we must. Yeah. So the Florida saga continues. Um. So back in oh man, when was that first announced? Anyway, Walt Disney Imagineering had plans to... Um, that was like two years ago, I think. Something like that? Was yeah. it pre-COVID? I was trying to remember. It was a long time ago that they were like, yep, we're packing up Imagineering. Yeah, we're moving to Lake Nona, Florida. So this was the relocation of Disney Imagineering, and it was very dramatic because it was moving from Southern California to Florida, and the big problem was the Imagineers were basically told, get on board or... Get out. Get out, yeah. And that's, like, Imagineers, I mean, you should treat all your employees well, like, let's preface with that, but when it's a creative, like, very uh, focused, high skill thing, Mm -hmm. you you got to be a, maybe a little bit more careful so you don't have the crazy turnover where you don't, you don't have that creative vision. Well, so much of that. This specific company relies on whatever the storytelling, like the creativity of it. So when you're messing with them, everything else kind of falls apart too. Yeah. Also, pay your writers. Well, <laughs> how is that writer strike going? I don't even Still. know. Still, right, well. <laughs> they they solved they solved the pilot strike for West Oh yes, so happy. I have a coworker who's flying out tomorrow, and she was ecstatic. Oh, oh man. <laughs> so Laura, I hope you're having fun in Mexico. She's not <laughs> listening. <laughs> She, she does listen occasionally, but she's not listening right now because she's in Mexico. Well, you know what? Fair. Fair. I would not be listening to me in Mexico either. No. Okay, so the lake, it was just called the Lake Nona Arrangement. Basically, it was the moving of Walt Disney Imagineering to Florida. And they were doing this for tax breaks because mm-hmm. um, typically red states, for lack of a better term, in the, in mm-hmm. the USA... Um, have less taxes and florida is notorious for having no state tax yep. uh, and no state income tax and uh excessive tax corporate tax breaks so disney was happy to move a big chunk of their company mm-hmm. there for for that purpose totally um what what happened okay <laughs> so they cite ready for the wording here so they've canceled first of all this whole thing, citing changing business conditions 
as the reason why. Damara was the one who came forward and spoke to all the cast members. Some had already moved, actually, because they were kind of told to. Yeah. Not very many, but they're offered, basically, the Disney companies, like, you can stay and, like, work remotely, I guess, maybe. Or you can come back and we'll, like, help you out with that. Um, there was more than 2,000 California-based employees that were being asked to relocate to Florida that are now going to be staying home. This is Damaro's statement. I, I actually looked this up. It is clear to me the power of the brand comes from our incredible people, and we are committed to handling this change with care and compassion. I remain optimistic about the direction of our Walt Disney World business. He reiterated in the memo to cast members that Disney is still planning to invest um, $17 billion in Florida over the next 10 years, and that will include 13,000 new jobs. Disney currently employs more than 75,000 people in Florida. So they're like... Florida is still important to us, but we're not going to keep pumping. Yeah, we're going to we're going to like focus on Disney World and um hey, guess what, Florida? Mhm. Here's how many people we employ, by the way. <laughs> Just throwing that out out there. <laughs> hey, you know all those new jobs that were coming? It, How's yeah, that whole legal thing I, going? I, no. I I <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah. Disney is a massive, massive, massive company, and I I don't cheer for unfettered capitalism, but when you look at the other side, you can't be able, help but be a little bit happy, right? Well, I mean that's basically <laughs> it. I it might be rock and hard place here, but mm-hmm. just saying. Okay, so we also have an update on Fantasmic. Okay. A Fantasmic at Disneyland will be on hiatus through at least Labor Day, which falls on September 4th. It released a statement. Wow. In which they said they will be exploring opportunities to add new magic and touches. So they're they're not even going to try and do it on a BMO. So they're going to rebuild it or something. They're doing something. The other update, we, I know we have like a big news item, but um, I gave updates on the rides coming back last time. We did finally get one for Peter Pan. It's coming back June 30th. Okay, so yes. not that long. Other I, than that, I everything was... I am super shocked that Fantasmic is not going to run through the summer in a B mode. Yeah, isn't that crazy? I, I am That's, too, actually. That that makes me go more on uh, Fresh Bake's side of like being concerned about it now. Because I thought they would just like push through. And... I honestly thought they were going to do B mode for the foreseeable future. And then at some point in the fall before the holiday season try and get a Maleficent up and going. I don't, I don't know. Now. I, don't know. I think you might I don't be right. I'm so know. happy we saw it when we were there. Yeah, thank goodness. Yeah, full mode and everything. Oof. And then the other really big news big. is this Park is Pass Reservation. Oh, this isn't big. This isn't what I was talking about. Okay, well, you, we'll get to yours in a minute then. Mm. Park Pass Reservation System at Disneyland Resort will allow guests to make modifications without canceling first. And this one is just... People are freaking out, basically. Because, well, so let's preface it with this. They did it in Disney World, <clears throat> and then they've been kind of easing off on some other restrictions in Disney World as yeah. well. I I just think this is system updates things. like. I think that the reservation system isn't going anywhere, but it'll be a reiteration mm-hmm. of it. So people who are, like, happy dancing with joy that it means that reservations are being gone that's not what you think it means even in disney world there are select good to go days yes and starting in 2024 of course Mm -hmm. but for your pass holders who are the people who are complaining Mm -hmm. they still have to make reservations it's date based single tickets that don't because those already have the dates attached yeah so it's just removing that extra layer of having a reservation even though you've already bought your ticket for that day yeah, so people are seeing this as heralding in that, there, but basically, no such, yeah. I personally find this like a great idea. You should be able to modify without canceling first. Yeah. That's great. That's, awesome. That's how it should work. Um, I, improving on the reservation system doesn't mean the reservation system's going away. That's just a sign no. that the reservation <laughs> system's staying around. <laughs> yes, just a different version of it. And that's good. I think that I think it needs some tweaks, but yeah, anyway. So I found that interesting. News. Your turn. Well, I thought you were talking about the big, big news. Okay. The, the, the huge news. Okay. They're closing the Star Wars hotel. Oh yeah, no, no, that is the big, big news. So, basically, the same time as they're talking about canceling the Florida, mm-hmm. Star Wars hotel's done. 
Yeah, the, they've. This is so sad the, to the, me. The last voyage is going to be in September. They they had some bookings past that, um, so you can't even book it now because they had bookings past that, and they're trying to like rebook people yeah. that already had a booking and all these things. Um, it at the end of the day, it's a failure. Yeah, which is kind of sad. It, I mean, it was way too expensive. Uh, this was something that would super interest me, but not at that price point. Yeah, we were when we first heard about it. It was like we we're definitely going to go. It, we figured it'd be expensive, but not that expensive. No, no, like it's supposed to be compared to a a cruise. Yeah, but it's only two days. Yeah, and a uh, comparable cruise with m- more options and things like that, and like you're actually cruising somewhere. Uh, for a week is the same price. Yeah, whereas this is two days. It's two days. It's it's the the value proposition is absolutely not there. I think it was a very cool experience, and I and I hope that it doesn't scare them away from doing. That's my like, big worry, big actually. Things yeah, like this in the future. and I feel like it will. I feel like it will too. I feel like it will. They there's been a lot of flack, I guess. That Disney's gotten lately for like being tentative mm-hmm. about doing the big things. Well, this is one they were doing, and it failed in just over a year. But they but, went they went big, but they they tried to make it a premium. The trouble was is they pitched Galaxy's Edge, yeah, um, as this big interactive thing, and then scaled that back, and then came out with this hotel that was like going all in on this interactive like Mm -hmm. you're living in the star wars universe and and go all for it but you have to pay way too much money yeah and there and there was no coupon day (laughs) nice jurassic park reference yes so i think the thing here is they didn't know their audience like you can you have disney nerds who will spend ridiculous quantities of money obviously they did get people there Mm -hmm. but they go once and you're wealthy, wealthy people who can do spend this kind of money for two days, like are not necessarily wanting to be immersive in Star Wars. Right. So like you have different categories of people mm-hmm. here. I mean, and you I overgeneralizing human beings sucks, but that's kinda of what you have to do in this kind of situation. That's when how you're ana- talking that's about how analytics works. Exactly. And div- like trust me, Disney thrives on analytics. I, and I totally get that. So I don't it was like you either needed to make it affordable so people like us who could like, oh, we'll spend, oh, it's a little expensive, but, you know, it's a once-in-a-lifetime half, thing. If it was half the price for two days, I would have absolutely signed up to do it. I would have been like, oh, man, that's really expensive. For half. Half. Yeah, so. But I would have done it. Yeah, but that was kind of where it needed to be. But to make it that fully immersive... They wanted to have it that high end. Well, like, who are you getting to do all that then? Yeah, you're really and high the, end people just want to pay the money. You and do had the tour some, and... but it's not it's not long term sustainable. And yeah, well, it's I just sad. I really just hope it doesn't detract from doing cool things in the future because I really, really. I'm curious to, do to see this. what they end up doing with that property. I'm not and, holding my breath. And well, that whole building exists. Like, are they going to bulldoze it? I can't imagine they're just going to bulldoze it. Like, just make it a hotel. But maybe. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. But it is it is kind of sad. It I, is. I find it very I sad. I would have liked to do it. I wasn't paying what they were asking. I honestly thought they were going to maybe drop the price or have, like, special days or something. And I was like, we are going to make this work at some point in the future. But it wasn't open enough, long enough to make it work at some point in the future. No. no I will... I absolutely was not paying. What no, 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 that for. coupon day. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's that's the news. Anything else to add? Are you excited to get to blind date with Disney? Yeah, I am excited <laughs> for that. Disney Plus and chill. Okay, I'm ready. I can do this. Okay, cowbells is what you gave me. So let me let me preface this with a, a little bit of an explanation of why I picked this this film. Uh huh. Um, I can't wait. <laughs> no, I know why. But anyway, go ahead. You were home alone. Mm hmm. Because I was off on a lovely bachelor party. Yes. Um, 
And this bachelor party took place on a farm. Yes. With cows. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Cowbells. <laughs> Cowbells. Now, and, and let's look with bells as in f- girls. B-E-L-L-E-S. Right. Okay. You're going to need more cowbells. That's the... That's I should have had a sound effect for this. That's the episode title. Should have had more cowbells. Gonna need High more. Five. Gonna need more cowbells. Nice. Uh, are you ready for this ride? Hmm. I'm very curious to see what this movie's about. I'm so kind I, don't, of, I don't ever have to watch it. This might be my second favorite that you've ever made me watch. Oh. My right, first... after, right after the magical gourd, right? No, God, it was the worst. <laughs> it was so bad. But I actually really like Teen Beach Movie 2. Uh, but I would, like, the, its only detriment was that I was like, now I kind of need to watch Teen Beach Movie 1, which I know was, like, the angle you were going for, except I kind of liked it. Um, that was way better than it had any right to be. But I went in with, like, dirt expectations. Also probably helped a little bit. Anyway, this is not as n- good as not, that. Not the magical gourd? Not the magical gourd. Screw you. Hmm. Um, here check we go. Out, check out the Magical Gourd episode. It's <laughs> chef's kiss. I mostly cry through most of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Stupid gourd. I don't even like the word anymore, and I love fall. Like, it's so annoying. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Okay. So, our story focuses on Courtney and Taylor Callum. They are well-intentioned, but very spoiled. They live with their widowed father, Reed who runs Callum Dairy, Cowbells, Dairy, okay, with his no. best friend, Bob Fenwick. Now, <laughs> first of all... We're best friends. No, no, they actually... Oh, friends. okay. Um, they started the business awkward. With, um, with Reed's wife at the time, but his wife died. From a mad cow disease. I, that would have... That seems like it's in bad taste. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe, I just want to say, uh, Bob Fenwick is the bad guy, just so we know. But maybe he was annoyed about starting a business with his best friend and his best friend putting his name on the on the business. Uh, fair, Bob. Yeah. Fair, right. Bob. Um, Taylor, at the beginning, just gets her, she's the oldest one. She just gets her driver's license and a super fancy car. And H- How did... Who bought the car for? Oh, the father. Like they're very wealthy. Oh, you said they're they're spoiled farmers. No, this no, no, like, no. They run a dairy company. This is a very fancy dairy farm. Yeah, no, it's not a farm. It's a company where they like package yogurt and milk and stuff like that. Oh, a, like, so they don't have company. anything to do with cows. That's not necessarily true. Just, just, just hold <laughs> off for this ride. It's it's a ride on the back of a cow. So no, I'm joking. Uh, but although that is on the promo, I don't I don't <laughs> recommend riding on the back of a cow. No, that'd be bad. There's, there's so we open with Taylor doing her driver's test, and she passes. Most she talks her way into it, but she's not like terrible, but she's not great. And that's basically the whole premise. They're not like, like bad. Like this movie. Yeah, exactly. They're not bad, like humans. They just are very, very, very spoiled. And wealthy. And meanwhile, so, Courtney... So they're bad. Humans. No, because they're not rude to other people or anything. Um, they're just kind of oblivious. Courtney, meanwhile, the younger one, she's 16 and she's planning her cotillion. Her what? Like, coming out party. But not that kind of coming out party. Like, it's still a thing they do, I think, in mostly in the southern states, probably, where you're, like, having a baby. It would be, like, a super sweet 16 thing, except you get together with a bunch of girls, and it's, like, being presented to society. Cotillion. Super fancy party. Oh, like Bridgerton. Kind of like that, except less marriage. No, the, but Bridgerton, they come out, and they're presented to society. Literally, it's like that, but, like, new version of that. Big party. That sounds very southern. It, yeah, that's <laughs> why I'm assuming that's where it is. The girls go, so at the beginning of the movie, this is, this is where we're walking in on, okay? The girls go on a shopping trip, but they leave a towel on a stove and it, it lights, basically starts a fire. So fed up with their spending and their carelessness, the father, Reed, insists they spend the summer working at the dairy. Meanwhile, Bob Fenwick, who's Reed's best friend and business partner, sends him on a trip where he won't, ha- where he will happen to not have any cell service. It's like a once in a lifetime trip. Good job, Bob. But he does this purposefully. He wants Reed like not contactable. Get out of town. And while he's gone, and the girls are working at the dairy, Bob steals the whole all the company's money. Cool. Okay. Smart. That's just that's just savvy businessman. So Reed goes on his trip, 
Um, the girls start working at the su- working the summer at the dairy, and they don't realize there's anything wrong with Bob at the moment. They hope to be like, oh, we'll answer phones, or we'll get coffee, or something like that. But no, the father was very specific before he left and could call them back. You're gonna muck stables. Based- no, the- it's like a production line. Uh. Then that's where they're gonna be working. They're well-meaning but terrible workers. Um, and there's like some slapstick comedy going on. They like fall into yogurt kind of thing. It's yeah. That's disgusting. Really, really is. The, the people um, have to eat from this production. No, line. no, that not that. That's the whole thing. Is all that stuff gets tossed, and so then everyone's mad at them. Wow. Because it like that, slows down. Production. I would be mad at them exactly. as well. Yeah. Um, the girls. So yeah, they just mishaps basically. They both develop romantic interests. Um, the best one is Jackson. Jackson is a dairy farm son, the farmer, the son of a dairy farmer. Does he know how to milk a cow? Yes, but he's the best one because when we meet him, he's holding a pig. Oh. <laughs> so he's automatically the best one. I, th- I feel your bias in this assessment of his character. It's true, and that's saying something because the other one is a foreign exchange student. Hmm. But this one is holding a pig, so he's the better one. He's the better one. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm assuming it's a cute pig. It's such a cute pig. It's a little pig. Oh, little piggy. Little piggy. Okay. Um, but anyway, oh, he's like a farmer's son. And the older one, Taylor, goes to him because... You know what's better than farmer's sons? Mm. Farmer's daughters. You married one of those. Yeah, I did. High five. (laughs) Um, But she gets sent to him because, I guess, like, dad has a connection with the dairy. And when she gets her super fancy car, she needs to learn how to drive a stick shift. So they're going to, like, practice out on the farm kind of thing. So she develops a thing with Jackson. And the younger one, Courtney, develops a thing with this exchange student who's, like, living with a neighbor or something. That's lucky that they both found uh, some... Well, we do need to have, like, some romantic interests here, basically. Yeah, I... Yeah. But it actually, like, it's done well. Um, Taylor's trying to convince him that she's not, like, a horrible human being just because she has money. Um, and then she stands him up on their first date because she's like, because so she, she's a horrible human. So being she comes yeah. home from work mm-hmm. and she like sits down and immediately falls asleep, kind of thing. Because she's not used to working. Because she's not used to working. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. she's a horrible human being. Yeah. Right. But but he's holding a piggy, so he's a good guy. <laughs> I didn't say he was a horrible human being. Um, so as the money is discovered to be gone, there's chaos at the plant. No one trusts the girls anymore who are still working there. They just like walk in on this basically. And they were, they, meanwhile... Because payroll's not going to be met anymore, apparently. Right. No, that's the whole thing. It's not. And so they worry about how to save the dairy and the workers' jobs. But mostly the older one, Taylor, is worried about this. Courtney has been left some money to plant her cotillion. And though she refuses to donate it when asked, Taylor takes it without her permission to pay the salaries of the workers. Not the cotillion mm-hmm. money! So that causes a huge rift wait, between them. Wait, wait. She was going to have a... a Sweet 16 or whatever mm-hmm. party that was enough to pay an entire factory's worth of people? Guess how much she was left. And she was, like, annoyed that she was on a budget. I don't know, like $10,000? Oh, my. It was either twenty or twenty-five. So, like, the price of an average wedding. An, well, an, average, an average wedding. Just under the price of an average wedding. But all the girls, there was, like, four or five of them who were doing it together, and they were all pooling the same amount of money to have this big... Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And the other girls were already kind of annoyed at Courtney. Teenagers, am I right? <laughs> the other girls were already kind of annoyed at Courtney because she, like, made them all go on this budget, right? So they'd all be the same. So when Taylor takes the money without her permission to help pay off the workers... Um, then she's like kicked out and she can't be part of the cotillion anymore because they're like, hi, you can't contribute. And at that point, um, even though they've kind of begun to enjoy their jobs a little bit and the people at the plant, they have a huge argument over the money that Taylor took without Courtney's permission, which results in Courtney being distracted and she accidentally enters the wrong expiry date on all of the yogurt in a shipment. Oh, that's important. Expiry dates on yogurt are no joke. Well, this is, this is... Problem number two coming up. Big problem number two coming up. Although, I think it's going to be a joke in this movie, but, you know. Um, but then Courtney realizes that, like, her, most of the girls who are she's friends with, who, like, kick her out of the cotillion, are not, like, really good friends, because otherwise they wouldn't, like, kick her out of the cotillion for this. Um, she's this, like, this is a lot of focus on the cotillion. And I, I don't, no, I don't this know. is, like, why they're having a fight, though. And Taylor's like, it's the right thing to do. These people are, like they will lose their houses and not be able to do certain things. And it's in the States, right? So there's like medical procedures and stuff that are relying on 
being paid, and of course, none of that can no happen. No comment on that part. <laughs> uh, I think I just did. Uh -huh. That was my comment. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. So anyway, Courtney's mistake of entering <laughs> the wrong yogurt threatens their business because the milk or the yogurt believed to be expired is sent back. The employers realize this will take them all night to fix, and they will miss a deadline. Because if they have to have the deadline done, or it basically it's like we have to get this. Out they have by a this contract time. to fulfill their yogurt supply. That's it. That's it. Or yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Um, Reed comes back at the last moment with volunteers, mostly town folks, including some wealthy ones who had attended Courtney and her friends the debutante party or whatever it was. Ooh, the debutante ball. Yes. Yes. So she went to try and convince them to come help because it was like, well, we have enough workers and we work through the night. We should be able to make this like meet our meet our demands. We'll make like a new shipment and everything like that. I thought it was yogurt, not meat. Oh, uh, we'll meet our shipment. <laughs> and Jackson, remember Piggo Boy? Piggo his, Boy. His dad volunteers to provide all the dairy. He's like, because D if they lose... Like, if they lose the contract, we'll lose our business, too, because it's all connected, right? That is that is that is how uh, so he's gonna, trade and yes. capitalism works. So he's works, going to yeah. donate it. So they if they have enough workers, they can barely make this. They don't have enough workers. So she goes and she does this whole, like, we should not be wealthy, terrible people. And they're all like, ooh, ice sculptures. <laughs> or, oh, lobster buffet. And, Ooh, I like uh, it. So they don't get the workers, but Reed comes in and a bunch, he had gone looking for the girls, not realizing what's going on. And it was the night of the cotillion. So he'd like wanted to show up at the cotillion to surprise his daughter. That there wasn't a And cotillion. there was, well, there was, just she wasn't there. So then he hears what goes on. And then, and then he murdered the entire... And he murdered them all. Yeah, that was actually part two. Mm -hmm. Cowbells to the Reckoning. <laughs> 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 I kind of want to watch that now, actually. <laughs> but anyway, so he shows up, you know, I at know moments... what you did last summer at the dairy farm. <laughs> so he shows up with a bunch of the wealthy people, basically. Um, and they are, everyone is impressed with these sisters' efforts to save the beloved dairy company. And they all manage to very pull... Very beloved. Very beloved. Yogurt. Yogurt. It's what the body needs. <laughs> it's true. Um, they are... They manage to pull through the evening, and the employees and town folks celebrate. It is revealed that Bob Fenwick, who is the business partner, is the thief. After all, they, like, find this. Dang it, Bob! Um, but he gets away with the money. After checking his finances at the very end, Reed determines the dairy will survive, but the money will be very tight for some time. The girls happily volunteer to work with him, even when he gives them the day off to help out for the rest of the summer. Duh. There's an alternate ending. I didn't get to see it. It was just written about Okay. Courtney, the younger one, finds a way to track Reed's friend who stole the, um, Bob, who stole the money. The girls show their father a footage of the embezzler playing in a casino in Puerto Rico, and Reed alerts the FBI to catch him. Despite getting their money back, the sisters continue working in the dairy in the hopes of one day succeeding their father. That's the alternate ending. The real ending is the dad telling them like we'll make it but we have to tighten our belts and she said we'll be able to do back to school shopping and he says we'll and they're like they like have a little momentary panic attack and he's like i don't know we'll see and then they get up or happily to work during the dark the next morning and they're like no we want to besides if we're busy working we won't be able to go to the mall and he's like sounds good and they all drive off to work that's 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 the cowbells but they found boyfriends so it's fine yeah, uh, I mean, what else <laughs> really matters in life? <laughs> uh, so anyway, that is that. Oh, well, that sounds fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, that was cowbells. Maybe Moo. maybe uh, vet your your business partners a little better than... than they were than... friends for a long time, and apparently Reed turned down a deal that Bob thought they should take because it was going to mean that a bunch of the workers were going to lose their jobs. Mm. And so he's like the good guy and Bob's like the bad guy. But it would have meant I mean, a lot more money for Reed and Bob. There is no friends in capitalism. Well, that was basically the gist here, except Reed, who lost all his money. Yeah, well, it is what it is. I. Um, but did I mention the cute piggy? There, I'm glad there was a cute piggy. This movie sounds absolutely horrible. It also was little calvies. They were I like can't cute. believe you said this is the second best. That just tells you the quality of movies you've made me watch. No, it was cute. It was like, it was exactly what I was expecting it to be, but like slightly better. Silly teen rom-com Disney Channel type movie. 
cool. Well, I they just wanted I you. Do... I wanted you to watch a movie with cows. While there I were was cows sit, sitting in a cow field. There were cows. They were cute. There was even little calvies. But also, did I mention the piggy? Hmm. You did several times, <laughs> actually. Mm-hmm. Any questions about cowbells? Um, what what are their future plans? Like they were whining about their cotillion or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like were they going to school at some point? Yeah, yeah. Or? No, they're going back to school shopping. This is just like the summer party kind of back thing. Back to school for like high school? Yeah, because um, so the younger one is like 16-ish and I think the older one would be like 18 because that was the one thing is Courtney was really upset that she doesn't get her big party because Taylor got one. Mm. And they're really good friends and so at the beginning of every year, Taylor explains at the beginning, they divide up everything. Colors, celebrities they like, just everything so they never argue about anything. Oh, which celebrities did they like? They didn't say that. Oh, probably, probably Nathan Fillion. Probably not. <laughs> but just yes. me then. No, okay. just me. <laughs> um, yeah. Any other questions about cowbells? No, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it there. <laughs> All right. Nathan Fillion. Nathan Fillion. Well, we're leaving wow. him. What, Nathan? Okay. I don't know. So that is our show then. Thank you, El Mule, who's responsible for the. Co- hey, you were camping in a cow field with El Mule. I was. Um, we camped. Yep, and golfed. And golfed. Yep. Anyway, he's responsible for the custom theme song you heard at the top of the show. You can find a link to his work at our website, disneya.wixsite.com slash podcast. And that's also where you can find a link to our social media accounts, as well as our email. You can currently find us on Instagram at DisneyA.podcast, Facebook at DisneyA, and Twitter at DisneyA Podcast. You can find DisneyA episodes on all of your favorite and not favorite podcast streaming platforms, as well as on our YouTube channel, Adventures A. YouTube. Next episode, we're doing something new. So, we are going to, every once in a while, do a focus of a different Disney park in the world. Because it is on my bucket list to visit every single Disney park. You've done very well so far. Not at all. I've been to one. One out of how many? <laughs> more than one. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. There is more than one. Okay. Well, but, it depends because, like, do you want to break up Tokyo into, like, no, no, I, Tokyo I, or Tokyo Sea? Or... Like the centers. Oh, I want to okay. go to the centers. Okay. All right. Fair. So go you got for Disneyland, it. which yes. has... Disneyland Land. Disneyland and California Adventure. Yes. That That's one. Okay. Disney World has yes. four parks. That's one. So that's two. Correct. Tokyo. Tokyo Disney. Shanghai. Has a couple parks, mm-hmm. but it's one. Mm-hmm. Disneyland Paris has a couple parks. Mm-hmm. One's Two. Really, really small, yes. so that's one. Um, Shanghai. Yep. And Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And that's it. So that's not that many. No. We just need to get traveling. Just get but traveling. next so, week I we're... feel like Shanghai is probably going to be the, the, the hardest. Mm-hmm. That looks really good, but... But it's yeah, also in China. In Shanghai. <laughs> um, but we are going to start with Disneyland Paris. And we have a reason for doing that. My sister, who I've talked about, she's getting married here soon. She is. Oh, really? Pre- yeah, soon. Very soon. That's why you. Oh, that's why I went to a bachelor. Yeah. yeah. Now, it's all making sense it's all now. Making Thank- sense. Oh, I'm so glad you explained I, this to me. You are welcome. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. We. Um, so we are going to start with Disneyland Paris because for part of their honeymoon, they're going to visit Disneyland Paris. And also, my bro- one of my brothers has been to Disneyland Paris as well. So we kind of we El actually Mule. have yes El Mule. No. We actually chatted about it a little bit in one of our episodes. In one of our episodes. So um, it, I think it's called Two Big Thunders and Mickey Mouse Rain Boots. Sure, I don't remember. <laughs> Anyway, so we're going to talk about a crash course in Disneyland Paris next week. So join us then for that adventure. And until then, I'm Krista. And I'm Brandon. And we're definitely Disneyland Paris experts, so you should listen to our episode. (laughs) So until the next adventure, TTFN, ta-ta for now. (laughs) Thanks for listening to Disney A. And he murdered them all. Yeah, that was actually part two. Mm. Cowbells 2, The Reckoning. (laughs) Mm. (laughs) I kind of want to watch that now, actually. But anyway, so he shows up, you know, at moments. I know what you did last summer at the dairy farm. (laughs)